Welcome to Rubrik Security Cloud, your global control plane for all your data security needs. All of the tools that I'm going to cover in this video are built into the Rubrik Security Cloud platform. No agents to manage and no reinstalling security or data classification software in case of a ransomware attack. The scanning engines are built into Rubrik, so as your environment grows, the scanning performance scales in line with the number of Rubrik nodes. No complicated server deployments, no load balancing, and no centralized database to manage. We believe in keeping things simple. Today, we're going to walk through an end-to-end -end demonstration of how it can help you to recover from a cyber attack. Our security operations team has picked up some anomalous activity through the RSC integrations with their SAW tooling, and raised a ticket with IT Ops to assist with the investigation. From this main dashboard, we can see exactly what they're referring to. Let's dial in on this and see what our next steps are. From the main ransomware monitoring dashboard, we can see that the tier one business intelligence application recovery group indicates that all of the machines have experienced a data change event and files are encrypted. Ransomware monitoring uses a two-stage unsupervised machine learning process to identify encryption activity. This isn't your common or garden variety anomaly detection and can really help to minimize any false positives. It also has some other tricks up its sleeve, such as being able to identify common ransomware strains, which can save investigation time. Every time a backup is taken, the ransomware monitoring process is run. While the entire file system is scanned, Rubrik leverages incremental forever backups to maximize efficiency and speed. It doesn't matter if this is a VM, a physical system, or a NAS share, the same analysis runs. Here, RSC indicates that the ransomware strain is the popular lock bit. We can also see files marked as suspicious have had their extensions appended with dot lock bit. So we have a pretty good head start when it comes to identifying what we're dealing with here. So far, we've been alerted through our SAW tooling integration and Rubrik has surfaced both an encryption event and identified the potential ransomware strain. While SecOps have identified and handled the running processes for the attack, they're keen to do some further investigation so that they can ensure that this is exactly what they think it is and not new variants. They're also keen to identify where this was first seen in our environment, as our EDR doesn't seem to have flagged it as they would expect it. For this, we'll use a threat hunt. Threat hunting allows us to hunt in our backups for known indicators of compromise. This enables us to identify not only where the threat is, but when it was first seen. This, in turn, helps us to shortcut our incident response. Previously, we'd need to guess at what we thought our clean recovery point was, recover it to a sandbox, scan it to ensure it was clean, and likely repeat this process a number of times before we hit the right spot. And then we recover that into production. Threat hunting against backup data also has another advantage. If you're hunting against live machines and an adversary sees this, it's likely that they will accelerate their timeline, encrypting what they can to maximize the chance of a payout. Hunting against the backup data, you can identify the attack without tipping your hat. An indicator of compromise can mean many different things, but if we really boil it down, what we're looking for is patterns. Now, you might think that you need to learn some new programming language or something similar to use these, but it's actually pretty simple to read, super powerful, and very commonly used in the cybersecurity space. There's even tooling out there that you can feed a malware sample, which will then auto-generate Yara rules. Rubrik takes that powerful capability and makes it easy to consume. SecOps have provided me with a Yara rule, which identifies the relevant IOCs, and asked me to identify when it was first seen. While our SecOps team has provided me with this rule, there are many different sources of trusted Yara rules, including from our security software vendors, the open source intelligence community, and even government bodies like CISA. I'll paste this rule in here, then select which rubric cluster to execute the hunt on. We're focusing on our business intelligence platform here, which comprises some Windows and Linux vSphere VMs. With that said, Threat hunting also covers physical Windows and Linux boxes, NAS, and the Hyper-V and AHV hypervisors, so we're in good hands here. Next, we'll define the time frame to hunt through. This helps us to identify that first entry point, which in turn helps when it comes to selecting a clean recovery point. 
And that's how easy it is to set up a threat hunt. Kind of cool, huh? I can already hear your next question though. How do I know what I need to hunt for? Well, I'm glad that you asked. While threat hunting is definitely super useful in a reactive scenario, we recently announced threat monitoring, which is coming soon. Threat monitoring automatically scans data across your rubric deployment with a curated, automatically updated threat intelligence feed, helping you move your data security strategy from reactive to proactive. We see a need for both approaches. A curated threat feed gives you a great baseline of detection, but there's always the full threat hunt engine at your disposal if you need a more surgical approach in a world of ever evolving threats. To learn more about threat monitoring, check out the breakout session from our recent launch event at forward.rubric.com. With the threat hunt running, our next part of call is to identify if any sensitive data was impacted by the attack. As you might imagine, there are all kinds of data involved in our BI platform, and if we have any kind of sensitive data exposure, there's a need to notify the authorities. Again, Rubrik Security Cloud can help here. Straight from the ransomware monitoring page, we can investigate the kinds of data that were impacted. Having a fully integrated platform like this is going to seriously save you time in a crisis. Sensitive data discovery ships with many different pre-built analyzers and policies, which can be applied across multiple workloads in your environment. We actually use sensitive data discovery as part of our BAU processes because it provides great visibility into where our sensitive data resides and highlights when it's being stored in less secure places, such as open access file shares. Every time a backup takes place, it gets indexed and analyzed by the sensitive data discovery. No agents required on the servers, and even in the event of a mass ransomware attack, you can still access your sensitive data reporting in Rubrik Security Cloud. In this particular scenario, our compliance team has requested an on-demand scan of the impacted machines and shares. They want all out-of-the-box policies deployed, as well as some custom analyzers for business-specific data for this scan, so they can get as detailed as possible a view of the data that the attackers were able to touch. When the analysis completes, we'll receive a report by email and ship it over to compliance so that they can get started. Back to threat hunting, let's check out the results of our hunt. So we can see that the IOCs were found on these two servers. Although we have encrypted files elsewhere, it seems that the attackers deployed their payload here and encrypted the rest over the network. First things first, we want to quarantine these two snapshots so that nobody accidentally restores from them. Threat containment prevents a regular admin from being able to restore from known bad snapshots. Next, remember that our SOC wanted to do some further investigation? Rubrik Security Cloud has a feature called Cyber Recovery that can help here. What we're going to do is recover those two quarantine snapshots into an isolated environment. Once they're up and running, the SecOps team can detonate the malware to their heart's content without the risk of it spreading back to the production network. This uses Rubrik's live mount technology to instantly boot the snapshots into the isolated environment, meaning that there's no need to copy the backup files over the network. With this, we're up and running super quickly. Something else that can be super helpful here is the capability to save this configuration that we've defined for future reuse. Remember, we didn't need to have any form of predefined plan to set up this isolated recovery, but if you have a standard set of apps that you need to regularly test recovery of, saving these as a recovery plan can save you clicks in future, and objects can be a member of multiple recovery plans at one time. With SecOps now able to run all the tests that they need, our next priority is restoring business operations. Back in the ransomware monitoring dashboard, we'll select our tier one business intelligence recovery plan, and we can kick off a cyber recovery to restore service. Because we already know where the anomalous activity was detected, and we've quarantined the backups with the known indicators of compromise, we can automatically select the most recent clean backup. Rubrik Security Cloud provides a number of recovery options here. We could do an export, which would copy the full restore point back into production. This might be a good call if we need to recover to a completely freshly built environment. We could use live mount to stand up the VMs using the rubric clusters for storage. This is great for when you need to get those workloads back up and running quickly, and you can then migrate them back to production storage when time allows. In some scenarios, you might want to fail over to your DR site or recover into an isolated recovery environment, as we did earlier for SecOps testing. In this case, it makes sense to use in-place recovery to restore service. 
As in-place recovery is copying only the changed blocks between the current state and the clean recovery point, this minimizes the volume of data that needs to traverse the network. And just like that, we're back in business. While we're showing here how cyber recovery can help to address an active incident response, I'm sure that you can see how it could equally be used to enhance cyber preparedness. Having your teams well drilled puts you in a much better position when it comes to dealing with a live incident. And if you do find yourself on the wrong end of a cyber attack and need expert assistance, Rubrik's support-based ransomware response team is available 24 seven to assist all of our customers at no extra cost. In this video, we've dived into how Rubrik can help you to recover from a cyber attack using some of the capabilities of Rubrik Security Cloud from detection through to recovery. We showed how ransomware monitoring can highlight when and where anomalous activity is detected, including detection of common ransomware strains. Knowing which files were compromised really helps to identify that blast radius and can speed the recovery effort. Threat hunting can be used to hunt for indicators of compromise to further narrow down a clean recovery point. Threat containment takes the outputs of a threat hunt and locks those known bad recovery points away from regular admins, making sure that the malware isn't accidentally restored into production but keeping the forensic artifacts for further investigation. Sensitive data discovery can help to identify what sensitive data exists, where it is, and who has access. This is helpful when recovering from an attack, but can be equally used in business as usual to make sure that you're protecting that sensitive data. Finally, cyber recovery enables you to both recover the quarantine snapshots into an isolated environment for further testing, as well as to restore your production workloads back to a known clean configuration. Thanks for watching. To learn more about cyber recovery with Rubrik, go to www.rubrik.com or reach out to your account representative.